much. Good afternoon, for everyone. <clears throat> I'm going to just share my screen so you can see the presentation. All right, so <clears throat> I'm sure many of you would have heard of it, the BOSS program, Barbados Optional Savings Bonds. I'm going to take you through it um, and explain the main features of it, and then we're going to get to the questions and answers section. Um, scheme, Barbados Optional Savings Scheme. Now, why this? You've heard we have lost, we expect a loss because of COVID, about $500 million. And that is directly because of COVID. At the same time, the government would have accelerated its response to COVID, spending to a tune of 1.5%, uh, between 100 and $150 million in terms of dealing with COVID from containing, identifying, in terms of, uh, and mitigating effects on the economy. Household survival program dealing with those also being directly affected, and the business and jobs survival program dealing with business and trying to keep them open. But even in the face of this um, sizable response, an appropriate response, we still, you still see that um, as of yesterday or so, the, only, the NAS claims are in excess of 42,000, which I understand is about 25,000 unemployed persons. Now, unemployment used to be around 9, 9.5% as the program settled down. So that is almost certain costs about 30% of the day before us. And so there's a need for government to even accelerate, particularly this capital work program, to try to soak up some of this unemployment <clears throat> that's out there. <clears throat> Excuse me. I offer a person an opportunity to earn some income and do something while we wait for the economy to open back up. So BOSS program comes up. The BOSS program is a way to achieve these objectives. One, allow us to do the capital works program, right? By another 100 million, and two, maintain public sector employment without cutting wages, but still utilizing some space caused by that. <clears throat> Let me explain what I mean by that. For the fiscal space, and imagine fiscal space being like a container where you put all your expenditures. So all the government expenditures in this fiscal space because this is the space defined by our revenues and expenditures, right? Wages is recorded in there on a cash basis. Last year, we spent Fiscal year, seven, $806 million. That's in that container, along with what we spent on um, interest payments, what we spent on goods and services, on capital, it's in that container. And because we define this fiscal space container there, and we don't want to be able to, we don't want to widen it in such a manner that would make things unsustainable. It means that if we want to spend more on something, we need to adjust on the other area. We've done that in all areas of expenditure. Now, the idea here is that for the wages, if we can take off a part of the wages we pay workers, not pay them less, pay them the same amount. But because everything in my container, my fiscal space is recorded on a cash basis, maybe I, if I pay them some, not as cash, but as a bond, it will create the space for me to put it into capital. You got it? So. Instead of paying 806 million like last year, maybe pay 700 million. But I give you, for the other extra million, a bond, which you will earn interest, and you still get your full salary. If you can afford to save, it's a brilliant idea, right? And if you can't afford to save, the work option means you have options that maintain. At the same time, because I'm issuing a bond, that space created by the bond, because the bond is not in the container, the bond is the debt. It gives me the capital. That's the idea. Okay, and I will explain it further as we go along if you have questions on it. So, what are the features of the bond? It's a four-year bond. So every year, let's say that your salary was 4000 and you were saving 200 in a bond. You, each month you get 200 in a bond and 800 in cash. So you get your full salary still, right? Full salary. And if you could afford to put it, don't say you used to put down that 200 anyway in a credit union or somewhere. This is a good savings because every year you get 4% on that, right? Um, 
let's say it was a thousand in savings, every, every month you put down a thousand, you need to put down your first thousand in July, you know what I mean? First thousand, five percent come, come to you in a year, that's fifty dollars. Next year, another fifty, and for four years you get five percent, which is two hundred dollars, and in the end of the four years, you put it down in July, right? You get it back in July, four years, the principal goes back in your bank account as a thousand dollars. So what you come up with, you get back your principal, you have four years earnings of two hundred dollars. You with me? Correct? Now, to make it even more flexible for you and to fulfill needs in terms of liquidity, we're going to pay the interest every six months. So instead of waiting any year to get you 50, you get 25 in six months and 25 in the next six months. You see what I mean? Eight, 25, you get back 200. And then at the, in July 2024, you get back the bond, cash in your bank account. That's one bond. August, you do the same thing. Another bond. You got two, 2,000, 1,000 bonds. That one matures four years in August, but you get interest all along. At the end of the period, you got 18 bonds put down. I will go through that. But let me tell you a bit about the bond, the price, or the attractiveness of the savings. It's interest, as I said, is paid semi-annually. You're folding tax. Usually, if you invest in anything, you in a bank, in bank account, in, in, in the bank, or a, a, a mutual fund, or a community, anything you invest in, the interest you get from that is tax, a uh, tax rate, what you call withholding tax. It, it's taken out even before you get back the interest. That is way on this, so you will get your full interest. Was it was $200 just now? You get that. In addition, it's fully tradable because at any day, the worker has 18 pieces, 18 separate ones, can trade any one, sell it when they feel like. At the same time, we've been working with the credit unions, the banks, and individuals also express interest. Demand's been high, so there's a demand, people are ready to buy if a public sector officer give up his bond. It's quite, quite stable. As we last that restructuring, it is really not restru restructuring the savings bond. So these are immune from debt restructuring. But the things that would have led us to restructure in the first place don't exist either. We restructure because of four problems, which I call the four horsemen of the apocalypse. We have high debt to GDP ratio, 76%. We fixed that. Now it's 118% of GDP. And even if it, it will crept back up because of the COVID impact on tourism, but it's lower. We're no longer the third highest in debt the country. The other one, reserves, we have, back before we started the BERT program in August last year, before that, we have $420 million at the Central Bank. We now got $1.7 and billion, dollars, $1.7 or 21 weeks as opposed to $400 million. And today, the MF just approved the third review of the program, or BERT program, we got our usual disbursement of 49 million US, plus we got another 90 million US because of COVID to help us respond. And therefore, that brings us close to 2 billion, almost 25 weeks of import. So we don't have a problem there. The other one was the fiscal. Prior to BERT program, the fiscal was unsustainable. The government wasn't paying the bills. A raise has climbed to $1.9 billion, right? Fiscal was 107%, which means expansion of strict revenues. So you had to be borrowing money to pay debt. And I should have mentioned, debt was so high, I just mentioned it, that you were paying 67 cents for every dollar of service debt, leaving 33 cents to do what you need to do. Wages, salaries, um, interest payments, capital work. So what you see, not much could have been done. We fixed that. The fiscal deficit is always a surplus now. Revenues are always more than expenditures. And more importantly, the primary deficit, which is used to pay down debt, is a surplus and very strong. Are we only paying 22 cents on your dollar for debt service now? 78 cents remaining to do the things we need to do. So economic fundamentals are totally different. I'm going to let you to lead to any possible debt restructuring. And the final thing on that is that if we ever restructure, when we built into the first debt restructuring, the clauses were three. If you miss the external debt payment, if you miss any three reviews for IMF, or if you restructure, the one billion dollars that we have saved from that debt restructuring annually going forward becomes due. You got to pay it back. So we definitely ain't going that way. I say that to say these bonds are protected in every sense of the word. The last feature is the early redemption feature. Uh, for two years, you can set government stands ready to buy back the bonds so you not want to keep it. So in terms now, so I'm telling you, your, your, your first truth, you're getting your full salary. There's no salary cut. There's no cut in employment. How, what, so what you get in part in um, cash and part in bond. 
Now, if you earn below 36,000, now this is net of NIS and we pay what you, and it doesn't include your allowances and your travel. So if you get below, if you were getting below 36,000, which is about 3,000 a month, recognizing that persons at that level are likely to spend a larger proportion of their money, their monthly income, on their monthly expenses. And also, government is coming there to build a housing program, home ownership program. Then you, you might need equity. We'll say, well, we will not allocate any bonds to persons at that level. However, it's fully optional. If you have the equity and you really want to invest because of the, the savings is so good, then we will accept your request. So at the beginning period, you might say, we want to invest 200, fine. 10% of my salary, fine, we will accept it. Between 36,000 and 50,000, okay, which is between monthly 3,000 and 4,166, you will get 93% of your salary in cash and the other 7% as a bond. If you earn it between 50,000 and 100,000, which is between $4,166, $8,333, you will get 12% of your in your salary and bond, and the 88% majority as cash going straight to your bank account. What we say by a bond, that bond, by the way, is in a bond account held at a central bank, and you get monthly statements and everything. So just if you got a, a bank account, a credit union account, a shares account, you got a bond account. You follow me? And then if you earn above $100,000, which is above $8,333 a month, you will get 83% in cash and the other 7% as your bond. Right? And that bond is held in your bond account. So what you do now, we'll just show you an example of what it means. Um, nothing happening there, right? In fact, let me do it in the Excel sheet so you can see it better. Now, assume a person is earning um, probably in the, in the Z scale. Let me just do the, um, say 14. <laughs> that was a test to see if you were still with me. I was testing to see if you were still with me. Be right with me. Hmm? I didn't hear you. I'm trying to find your space. All right, um, should be hearing all right. Can you see that? Tells me my internet is unstable, but bear with me. So if you're earning 48,000 um, a year, this is annual gross. It means that after NAS and PAYE comes out, your <coughs> net take home monthly income will be $3,397.09. Now, this is Mary, Mary Lou, public worker. She will have seen this in her bank account in March, in April. This is what she gets deposit for in Treasury. In May, she also say in June. But come July, we're proposing, the proposal will say a different mix. She's gonna still get $3,398 at any day, but it's gonna be from a different mix from a different source. She will get 90, you should get 93% or $3,000. $159.29 coming from the Treasury. And that goes to her bank account as usual. She will also get 7%, which is $237.80 coming from as a bond at the central bank. So at the, in, in July, Ministry of Public Service sent instructions to the Treasury to pay Mary Lou $3,159.29, which is the 93% of her salary. You with me? and also sends instructions to the central bank to credit Mary Lou's bond account with $237.80, which is bond. You got me? Mary Lou gets her statement from the Treasury saying, your net pay was 3,397, net of pay in NAS, $3,159.29 was sent to your deposit account in Boyle Street, uh, the bank at X or at the credit union, and 237 was sent, 80 was sent to your bond account at Central Bank. Central Bank sends you a statement at the same time saying, you have a bond account in this number, this number, and the opening balance now is 237.80. So you have your full salary, right? 
truth, no gimmicks. Now, in August, same thing happened. Mary Lou have another bond. When that first bond that went in in July, starts earning her cash immediately. Interest is being paid on that bond, earning on that bond. Every six months, she will get something. And in July, which year, 2024, she gets back the value of that bond, two thirds of her bank account in Broad Street, right? The one in August now goes in, now she have $475.60. The two add up. She see her money in the credit union, in the area, she is the three, 3,159, her bond account got in the, the yes, statement from the Central Bank. So every month she's getting this happen, right? No salary cut. But she's earning interest. So that in, um, if she does this for 18 months, 18 months is the length of the program. At the end of 18 months, she will have how much bonds in her account? 18 bonds, right? Each bond lasting for how long? Four years. Each earning interest every six months. So the, right? Every six months, eight times you will get it. The bond in November will mature when? Four years in November. The bond that she got in August this year will mature when? Four years in August. And she get back the money in her account. So she put in the money every 18 months and she get it back over 18 months per year account. But interest is paid on all of them every six months. You, you understand the picture? Now, at the end of the 18 months, she have 18 bonds, and if my math is correct, in my table 18, you get $4,280.33 savings. Now, this is, this is even, you, if initially we had a medium term concept, but it's more than medium term, because this, this is interest. You don't just go and get back your money, it's interest, it's pure interest, 5%. Now, let me show you what a good, and let's convince you that this is really, um, and this is how it's being paid every month. Right? To convince you it's a good deal, no one if you have put this money in the bank, you have earned $25.68. If you have put the 4200 and eight, eight, is it 80 dollars, eight dollars and something cents in the commercial bank or in your credit union, the average interest rate is 0 0.15. In four years, you will earn $25.68. But even if you are satisfied with that, as opposed to 800 and somebody dollars, I got bad news for you, you still can't get it because the bank charges $5 a month on your account will mean that you will be paying the bank $214.32 to keep your money. Well, oh my Lord, you make it worse then. No. I mean, this is a no you saying you are saying that it's $15 sometimes. So my God, you're paying the bank to keep your money. You ever hear a phrase, that your money work for you? But if you, put, if you put that for $280 in your bank because you can afford a sales, your money ain't working for you. You're working for your money, literally. But if you invest in these bonds, it's a no-brainer. Your money working for you. You get interest every month, which you could then take and buy more bonds, not primary through your wages now, but through central bank if an officer give up his because he can't afford to keep it. Or you could do anything you want to do with it, right? And you can see this example going right through. I don't want to go through all the examples, but you see the benefits. It is a, it is a purely on saving alone. You can't, this, this is no brainer. If you can save, afford to save, save. Now, what about Mary Lou can't afford to save? Let me do That's the person you really got to watch. Think about. The person who really, because of their economic circumstances, spend most of their money. Let's think about a Mary Lou. Mary Lou right now paying for her Toyota Corolla that she got the money for the credit unit to buy. She got eight more months remaining on that. Mary Lou also have to pay a court fee then said she took out. She got three more months remaining on that. So right now, Mary Lou, Mary Lou unfortunately, like most of us, have to spend all her income coming in, right? Mary Lou can't afford to spend a silver cent. She would love to, but she can't. So when Mary Lou gets the farm in July, and in July, the public service uh, will send a farm to everybody asking, this is your bond allotment, do you want all some, how much you want in cash, or you want to keep your whole bond. You could, every month you can provide instruction via the form. The form comes in the beginning of, um, of um, July before the program, early in month, and if you don't change, let's say you may lose, say I want all my money now, and you never change that, then that's fine. But you could change it next month. You can say I want all my money now for the next six months, and then seven months change it. You're really flexible on what you can do. 
So Mary Lou says she wants all her money. Now, why do we call this boss? And I must say this, I actually came out to your union reps, discussion them, the boss concept. I can't take credit for it, I would like to. So optional, the optional component. In this case, let's go back to Mary Lou. Mary Lou says, I know this is my monthly salary, $3,397.29, $3, but I can't see it, and I want all now. Sorry. No problem, government says. No problem. Here's what government do. Government sends the instruction, Ministry of Public Service sends the instruction to the Treasury to pay Mary Lou. How much? Not the 397 though. Mm -mm. Not that. The 3159 3%. So Mary Lou got some, but she want all, remember? Right? Gov the, the, the public, Ministry of Public Service also sent instructions to the central bank. Issue Mary Lou, credit Mary Lou bond account with a, with a bond for 237.80 cents. Well, Mary Lou didn't want that, right? Mary Lou want cash. So at the same time, the same instruction was here, sell Mary Lou bond and give her the cash. Central bank sells the bond immediately. In fact, to make sure it's seamless, sent it back themselves. And then Tyrone said, I went to Central back, they send the money directly to Mary Lou's account in Broad Street, wherever she's buying. Mary Lou go down and pay there and check her account. We'll make sure that government do what she thought and want to do. When she check, she see she balance, she got a total of $3,397.09. But the difference is, you have it from two different sources. For one source, on Treasury saying $3,159.29, that's in 93%, right? And another source from Central Bank saying $237.80. When she added much, she got her full salary. She's happy. Happy to call her. Let me, at the end, as we did before. Yeah. Do it end. So, she's happy as her. She has everything, right? Did government achieve its objective? Yes. Think about it. How much is she in cash? How much did she get? Huh? 97%. $3,159, right? Remember in my fiscal space, what do you record? I record only cash. I issue a bond, that's in the bond bucket. So I have still freed up, because even with the Mary Lou option, I've still freed up this fiscal space of 7% that I can put into capital. You got me? In truth, in fact, it doesn't matter what Mary Lou changed up. The difference is now that John Brown came to the central bank and said, give me that bond that Mary Lou just gave up. Not in those words, but basically, you got any bonds for sale? And say, somebody say, yeah, you got some bonds here. Got Mary Lou just give her a bond, right? You peep at my notes. <laughs> Let me get there, man. You peeping? Exactly. Mary Lou don't even have to wait. Mary Lou could take the bond and set, set herself to anybody. I can get to that. Pause there. But you are correct. Question was called Mary Lou, but we can deal with that in a minute. But you understand what happened? So, so if you really reflect on this, this is truly optional. Because that, if every public sector was a Mary Lou, and everybody want their money. Ain't there? That's fine. We st government still issues a bond. But somebody else in private sector, a credit union, a financial institution, holds, and government still got its space. So you're truly free to say whatever option based on your circumstances. Let me deal with Miru some more. Remember, Miru was paying some money at the next set at courts every month for three months. So that's July, August, September, November, October, Miru ready because. She done pay her off that the next set. So she could afford to save hundred dollars now. Mary Lou changed your instructions that you asked me. <laughs> so you watch me break watch me she break down. I was told. So she done pay her the next set by watching me she break down. Well, let, me, let me do it let me deal with that one in a minute. <laughs> we can deal with watching me she break down. But it's a good example. I can deal with you in a minute. So before you watch me she break down, she stopped paying for the next set. So she got an extra hundred dollars she could save. She changed her instruction. She said, no, look, I want to save $100. How do we process it? Instructions still go from the Ministry of Public Service to the Treasury saying, pay Mary Lou $359.29. 97%. Instructions go from the Treasury to the Central Bank. Issue Mary Lou with how much? Credit her bond account with how much? You want to guess? No, not $100. $237.80, the full amount I issue, government issue. But then a the second instruction says, sell all. She only want to keep 100, good. Sell 137.80. And John Brown buys that, and Mary Lou get 137.80 in her bank account. Government achieves the objective, Mary Lou wishes to be executed. Right? 
Then, Mary Lou, before the washing machine broke down, she dumped it off her car six months later. Man, that is January. In January, no, Mary Lou said, well, Lord, thank God. No, the machine broke down. She had a good machine. I'm going to tell you about that machine in a minute. You want a machine broke down too bad. In January, no, Mary Lou said, I dump it for the, for the, um, the Toyota Corolla. Now I can afford the 237. Give me my 237. The instructions go to the central bank, bam. Her account on 237, there's no sale, and the 97 she get in she account. So, John Bond kept that. He can keep that, earn interest on that, and in four years, he will retire that and get his 237. So he was still getting the He bought 137, so he will now earn interest on how much? 137 for the next four years, and at the end of the period, he get his 137 bank cash. Don't Mary Lou said earning only 100. Right. And he earned only 137. Right. Mm -hmm. so if you want to though. But, 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 but everything is a different bond. We done with that one that he got a piece. Oh, he got a piece? He got, that, that, that was, that was, um, that was October bond. Oh. Now we're talking about January bond. Every bond is a different bond. Oh. Every is a different bond. Thank you for that. Every is a different bond. So now she says she's saving for the month. Oh, she's going on nice and dynely. And as you say, the washing machine back down, break down nine months now. Now nine months after the program, the washing machine break down. What's she gonna do? The cheese on. No, but I can continue to say, but know what she's gonna do? She probably look at her bond account and say, she got two thirds, she got how much did they say? Add up to 5,000. Well, for, for simplicity. She has so far saved nine bonds in her bond account. She sell the first few, then she add the one third. So no, let's say for simplicity to add up to 5,000. She sent me contact the central bank. And say this, and I got an emergency, I need to buy a washing machine. So, these are my bonds. Maybe washing machines are one thousand, fifteen hundred dollars so Sell fifteen hundred dollars worth of bonds. Yes? And let me get my money. Now, because it's five months later, she may not get them dollar for dollar, depending on the demand. She might be lucky to get them more, and she may be able to get it a dollar and one cent on the dollar, or she might get them a little less. But the point is, she can sell it immediately, take her money out, and do her emergency, buy a new machine. Right? So it, it's very well tailored to every circumstance that the public sector may want, while still, um, in a way, allowing us to achieve our objective. Now coming to you, which is your point, Mary Jane could take her bond at any point in time and say, see me, when I sell my bond to the central bank and get automatically in my salary as cash, John Lou um, saving, but let me, I want to help my credit union. So she take her bond. Don't convert my bond in cash. She still need cash. But she take her bond. She goes to the credit union and says, listen, I got a bond, 237. I can let you back from me. Back dollar for dollar. Give me 237. Credit union benefits. She gets you 237. Credit union, no, because no credit union is investing. The, when you put your money in a credit union financial institution, they invest it in a bank and earn something money, and that's how you get their shares. At 1.5% in the banks, they ain't really earning nothing. But you presented them now with a bond, allows the, credit, offer, allows the credit union to do what? Make 5%. Their revenue enhance, their shares enhance. You, Mary, Mary Lou, who there is a memory credit union, get increasing share value. So she still gets same by giving that to the credit union. You don't have to, she don't have to do that. Mary Lou could, could have a friend called Mary Jean, buddy from somewhere. And Mary Lou now needs some money. And instead of she waiting to sell, she can tell the friend that, my friend, she decide, you buy my bond from me, and she agree on a the price. They go to the central bank website, download the form, because all now needs to instruct the central bank to change the name on the bond, uh, basically sell to her friend. They take the form for it out, go to the priest, the judge or somebody, get notarized to ensure that none of them is, you know, is a legal transaction, no one is really under duress or something like that. Upload uh, the form, bam, transaction completed, all right? Correct. So, but that, so that's it. Credit unions, direct trading, you can get your bond immediately, it's fully optional. Now let me basically pause here now and invite yourself and the other people to ask questions.
conform to what the ministry of health has set out. We don't have to wear them, especially in the year of God. Just stop. Just stop. Good evening, everyone. Um, I came in a bit late. However, while I was watching um, on yesterday, I heard Madam Prime Minister talk about something about space, um, fiscal space, and money being used for capital and that kind of stuff. Am I correct? Correct, absolutely. Okay. Now, I work in the accounting section. Now, you talk about the bonds, you have to, if you don't want them, you have to inform your PS or head of department to let them know if you don't, this is if you don't, if you don't want the bonds and so forth. Or if you want part, half of them. Right. All, you just indicate your preference at the beginning of the period, yeah. Now, we're dealing now with time. Period is normally between the 24th maybe the 26th of each month. Change of pay is roughly the 10th, 11th or so of each month. Follow me so far? Mm -hmm. Right. Now, time is essential. So if one has to inform your department, you have a big department, say like police, you have to inform that person, which is your head of your department, then they have to inform the other head, which could be the deputy, or then the PS. But then it has to get now to the treasury. Then it has to move from the treasury, is it to the central bank? Along the process, yes. Good. So Thank that you. is time. So I would like to know your format and how you're going to go about this, since time is essential. As you talk about, the lady wants to pay for her fridge, mm -hmm. her car, and that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Now, they have a time limit also. Mm -hmm. so, so how mm -hmm. are you all going to generate this time consuming? Saint Spade, it would be the 25th. Mm -hmm. So your, your, main, your, your point, which is quite correct, is that there have to be a cutoff period from which you make your indication. Exactly. There's always, there's always government sufficient time to work the system through. Right. Now, it will, as you indicate, very early in the month. We yes. don't have the exact date because after these public um, discussions and getting you on board and explaining. Now attention has to be turned to deconstructing every step of this process. And you'll be pleased to know that Prime Minister is in charge of that totally, exactly. even not to any to chances. Exactly. We're gonna deconstruct every step and rebuild it and follow it through, test it to make sure that it's sufficient time and every point work. Because we recognize that it's gonna be critical that every person gets their full salary on time with no hiccups. So thank you for that. And the point is that you have sufficient time to submit your options every month. And the medium and direction in which it will be done will be very clearly spelled out to you long before the process. Right, and because most people know that there's a deadline for what we call change of pay, mm -hmm. I think I can just spell out something is that you all can lean towards something similar to that because people will have that time because you also have to give time remember computers mm -hmm. so definitely we're going to be it will be spelled out very clearly okay next mm -hmm. question can i have say for instance you have a son and the bond can it have his name and my name or only can have one body name no when it's issued to you it'll be in your name because you're the public sector worker but it's your bond account just as you got account at a commercial bank you want to put your son name you can put any name you want to put it 
the, that's a financial institution that will deal with that. In this case, it's Central Bank. So you just touch base with Central Bank, say, I want to put my son name, or I want to bequest it, I want to, whatever. That, it's your bond. You can do whatever you want with it. You okay, can even put my I, name. You want them? Spend if I put them. my name, and something happens to me, be. Same thing, it's a legal document, right? So you can will it. You can, if you don't have a will, it goes to the estate. You can bequ bequest it, you can do whatever. Again, it's a legal document. All right. The, but you just remind me to say that we're going to also be putting on financial literacy clinics across the island starting soon. Because this, your question, there is other questions person have asked before. So I bring people knowledge up to what bonds is, how you use them, what you can do, can't do, how to trade, different things like that. Uh, you're All quite right. correct. You have it for 18 months. If I want to, I'm just sending out something. Suppose I wanted to do it for more than, is the government that's seen this for 18 months? If some person wanted to do it for more than 18 months. So the program, the anything, and good fiscal behavior would suggest they have programs that have a defined opening and start. So we've defined this 18, sorry. Good fiscal and practice is that you have a program, any program has a defined beginning and end. This one ends in December 2021. Mm -hmm. So your question, if you, I mean, it's a wonderful program, we let you keep it forever. But trust me, the other programs will come along. We're also looking sometimes to the issue of solidarity, a pandemic solidarity bond for different purpose so, and that will offer you a chance to invest. So coming along, there'll be different programs, but every program, all good things must come to an end. Yes, I understand. However, you said, okay, the program is for 18 months. Yes. Okay. However, you have it, you, the maximum is a four year period, correct? So that means that each bond is a four year bond. Exactly. So if you put in money 18 months, you have 18 bonds. Each one of those maturing in four years from the date you receive it. And each paying interest every six months until it's mature. And upon maturity, you get back the bond value in your account as cash. You are, are no, I shouldn't say you are. Are you doing it on the cumulative amount or are you doing it, like for instance, suppose I'm paying $1,000 per month. Are you giving me in six months 2.5 of $6,000? So if you had $1,000 you put down in July, let's but, say you didn't put down anymore, you would earn a year. No, 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 no. I'm saying $1,000 for, it's an 18 month period. Say you start in July. Uh -huh. July to December is six thousand dollars, correct? A thousand each month. Yeah. This is just an example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A thousand each month. Mm -hmm. What I'm asking you is it two point five percent of six thousand, or are you doing it on the cumulative total? Which means you get one thousand in July, two thousand August. So are you doing the 2.5 of $2,000 or are you only doing the 2.5 of $6,000? No, need, need, not quite either of the two. So your analysis is good, but let me explain it a bit. So you were saying you put down 1,000 every month to December. So you got 6,000. Yes. Each of those is going to earn you interest starting as soon as you put it down in month yes. one. Yes. Right? But the one you put in July mm -hmm. will be six months old in December, in January. Yes. In July, six months old, in, you pay only end of July, remember? Six months old in January. He will pay you half of your 5% which over is that point, period. Which is 2.5. But the one you put down in August, August is only five months old. So that's 5 12 of the, six, of the, 12th of the month year. Oh. And the one you put down in September is only four months old. Mm -hmm. He's 4 12 you're getting. Okay. You follow me? Yes. So yes, it can be yes. staggered. Okay. But at some point in time, everybody give me a day for a while, and then you get your you see your interest maximum, and you'll be <laughs> getting it, and then they taper off as fellows mature. But you oh. asked a lot of technical questions. I mean, you got to still have a talk. My final question: <laughs> I listen to David Ellis on mornings, and I like to know what's going on within the world, not mm. just Barbados. So I listen to the financial reports. Mm. My last question is this. It's a four-year bond. Yes. The government is in session now. Mm -hmm. This is 2020. So I think it is the 23, which will be next election. Am I correct? 2023? Uh, am I correct? 
my, right, my, right, my right. Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm going right. I'm going right. Uh-huh. I'm going right. Therefore, shh, no. If, uh-huh. if government changes. You want to know if the bond is protected? Will you if, get your value? Yes, because they say legis- legislation is what deems, but you know you can put a legislation and say, okay, before one day. So in other words... So you remember, listen, um, a financial bond or any instrument is legal authority between the government and Barbados, whoever government power and the holder of that bond. Mm-hmm. And like in 2000, earlier we didn't restructure the, the savings instrument, it's on like to restructure because it have a restructure protection in it. But in addition to that, any time a government wants to restructure, they have to come and consult with the bondholder. So it's how you want to And then the financial situation, the economic situation I mentioned to you, is not the same as it was back then. So there are many factors that tell you that this bond will be honored or unlikely to be restructured. Oh, you just want to know. You know. Mm. Yeah, so that when I put my money there, I can guarantee that after my four years, that you don't get your money. I can look for something. Yes, of course. Okay, and if I want to put more than, you see, be, I'm in the bracket, in there in the you 7 to 10. You can put more than is allotted to you in terms, but we're looking at those limits because we're mindful that we, every debt bond issue is a debt and we want to be prudent, so we will be working out. Right now, we can say it at the limits, the guidelines we've put, that we'll reach 100 million. But maybe we can afford, based on our debt trajectory, 110, 115. We have to do that and get back to you to those extra limits. But if you have extra money, even if the limit is reached, you can buy on the secondary market at the central bank when you may lose. Uh-huh. Who want, at that point in time, you may want to don't have, can't hold the bond. Right. right. So, so, so long as I agree with having money taken out from my salary for the bonds, when say July comes, I don't have to tell you all anything or write about you. Or... You can get a server, a form coming around July early, asking you how much you want in cash or you want all, some part of. So every but, month? No, you could say I want it for the next eight months. This is my instruction for the next eight months. I will change them later. Or even you can change them anytime you want. It's really so optional. You can, you can have something saying, oh, okay, since it's 18 months. I'll something say, okay, 18 you months. Could, you could do that too. Absolutely, you can do that. Because they make the sense I got to talk to them all right. day. No problem, you can do that. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much. Huh? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, earlier, I had indicated that there were members following us on Zoom. This is not an attempt to stop you from asking questions, but I want you to be gracious enough to allow me to interact with the controllers at the back. And periodically, questions will be entertained from those who are following us on Zoom. I think I can take one now. Thank you. Is government willing to adjust my car loan to perhaps stretch it longer to give me more disposable income, which will then allow me the space to invest in bonds? Um, <laughs> no, 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 um, sorry? No, we will have to, that's not something you have looked at as yet, and so we have to get back to you on that one. Hello, good evening. Yeah. Sir, if um, the bondholder should run into difficulty. And I, no, let me put that differently. And um, the bondholder wants to sell at a discount. Could, is that possible? Yeah, I don't think you'll want to sell a discount. You'll want to get the best price you can get. But depending but on market person, forces, uh, depending on the demand and supply at that point. So uh, what right. we guarantee is that at the time you get your bond and your salary, as part of your salary, you will, and you want to change up at that time, when the instructions go to the central bank, you will get it dollar for dollar. Yeah, so you know, yeah, that's at that time. Right. Anytime after that, you want to sell your bond, it depends on the forces of demand and supply on okay. that bond, the secondary market. It may be a time where, right now, demand is quite heavy here. We are hearing pensioners asking, people asking if they can have an injury 
the credit unions are interested in private sector, Joe Brown in public, everybody interested in. So you might be able to sell your bond at a premium, not a discount. You may get a dollar, 102 cents on the dollar, as opposed to 98 cents on the dollar. So it depends on the market. You don't have to, 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 to you don't know, not bound to sell on par. As it no, no, it depends on the market. Okay. You might decide to sell it to me. I might want it really bad. I might say, well, I can give you 101 cents on the dollar. Right. But then someone else, my friend here, she might say, no, she wants it. Give you 105 cents. You seek the best price. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. fine. Yeah. Is there another one on the Zoom? <laughs> yes, there is. If I collect welfare, can I still invest in bonds? If your boyfriend give you money, if your say father gave money, who will give money? Your money, you know? <laughs> it's your money. You can invest in bonds with your money by going to the secondary market and buying them up. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> The qu sorry, the question is, if you are if you're getting welfare, can you invest in bonds? As long as you, it could be, a, I'm not, I'm sorry, Prime Minister reminded me not to be, not to be um, gender blank, <laughs> blank. If you're, if you're outside girlfriend, <laughs> helping you there, to be equally fair. My point is this, on a serious note, yeah, let's be serious. As long as you're a government employee, you can get bonds to spare your um, salary, a portion. But any funds you have outside, well, whatever source, bequest or running to some money or something, you're free to go on the central bank website, register, and purchase bonds. Whether you are on welfare or not, it's unimportant. What's important is your disposable income at the time, what you have available to, to do what you want to do with. All right? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, um, I heard you mention about the option to, if you opt out, the Ministry of Public Service will send the instruments to the central bank. How it will work for statutory boards? So again, we are still working on the logistics in terms of communicating and in terms of statutory board, the route you would take to, to exercise the option. But the principle remains the same. That even as a statutory board worker, you will pay the income from government a salary. You will get part as bond, part cash. Um, if you want to opt out, mean you want all your money, you will get that in your bank account by pay day, right? The logistics of who you channel information with will come from public service, clear instructions, very soon. So stay tuned for those, they will come. Mm -hmm. Doctors on QVH at contra on contracts and in the polyclinics. We're gonna be looking at con people on contracts and everything, everybody, we want everybody to benefit from this. So we will ask me about the logistics. Now, the team, the Prime Minister has been stretched with all these presentations and working through logistics with the unions and refining it and making it what it is, this product is now. Now the next focus is implementation. So we still have to sit down and dissect and deconstruct and reconstruct the process and then send instructions to everyone explaining what to do. But the principle, you understand me? You hear me? Remains the same. That you will have an option to say what you want, how much you want, when you want, how long you want it for, change them by any point in time, what we just have to work out is the route which should do that. You mean? Well, so it will just be from a secretary to the CEO to the... That part, I'm not sure. I got, we got to work out that for you. You might want it. So everybody can benefit from your question. By the way, yes, it was Mary Jane. People ask me what happened. I said she, she got married. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, the issue about the contracting doctors, we met with them yesterday, health, and that came out also um, in terms of payment and being addressed, yeah. Go ahead. Let's say for instance, Mary Lou is um, pregnant, so you know. She's who? What, she's pregnant. Oh. So you know, um, as whether temporary or permanent, the officer has to take 84 days of maternity leave, which is paid by national insurance. So Mary Lou's off the pay sheet. How will that affect the bonds that are supposed to be taken out from the money for her salary, the adjustment? You know, this is the because first time we got this question. How much time we be doing this now? Your employer and national insurance at the same time. Uh -huh. This is the first time we got this question. I must and tell you. And then <laughs> there's this thing that national insurance pays you late. 
for maternity mm -hmm. benefits. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to have to reflect on that with the union and the rest of the team and come up with an answer. Management for that. Yeah, the four days. Yeah. Yeah. Get some exercise. We've been sitting all day. This morning, we're the heads of government meetings. So, I'm saying that we will have to come up with a special program for persons who, because technically speaking, when you're on maternity leave, you come off the pay sheet and go straight to NIS. So, we're going to have to come up with something. So, you're helping us to perfect it more. Thank you. But once you go back to work, then obviously the arrangements can kick in as well. Okay. Another question now that she raised that. Now I deal with payroll. Now sometimes, as she say, a person who's investing in bonds, they maybe only pay sheet. Sorry, this is what this is June. So you have July coming. The person was only pay sheet in June. Sorry, the person is going to be only pay sheet in July. The bond starting in July. August, the person get take off the pay sheet, but PAD put the back on the pay sheet after pay day. You follow me so far? The truth is that this morning, I haven't even had a chance to meet with the Director General, but this morning when I came in to the education meeting, I had been meeting with the Director of Finance, the Accountant General, the Deputy Accountant General, the PS Finance, etc. And we're going to have to reframe a lot of rules, not just for this, but pursuant, I was actually meeting with them pursuant to the commitments we gave to the health people yesterday and following through on that to make sure that this thing with authorities, etc., and approvals and in fairness to the Ministry of Public Service, sometimes they are a victim of the line ministry too. So I'm trying to deal with it at the level of public service and accountant general, and for us to have a rolling sheet of all who are two months away from their authorization um, going forward so we have enough time to process everybody in good order. Um, now, we are trying to change a system that has existed for how long? Too long. <laughs> and it's about time to change it. But the only way we're going to change it is literally by rolling up our sleeves and literally going through every step of the way, which is a tedious process. So that's why you hear me say today that when we get through these few days and get through Parliament, literally from next week, my focal attention is on being able to get the process right for everybody and also for the people who have been dropping off of the pay sheet for whatever kinds of reasons um, or in addition for the appointments that if we can do as many appointments en masse as far as possible but that means revisiting some of the basis upon which um, appointments would normally be done so what is our intention? That we have a incentivized, keyed up, proud workforce that is confident, creative, compassionate, and committed. And the other way that can happen is if not only if you lift weight, but if we lift weight as an employer too, and try to understand that some of the things that people have been complaining about for years that we need to see how we can help use technology, use new systems, use new rules to make life not difficult. You know, I say all the time that the University of the West Indies accounts are Byzantine. And it takes a special, special effort to understand and appreciate them. I do not believe that the public service of Barbados needs to be Byzantine in its rules and its applications, but at the same time, we have to balance the protection of the public interest with the empowerment and the incentivizing of the worker because we want every worker to give 150%. So if you want every worker to give 150%, then what do we do? 
we equally have to what? Give them back. Give them back. Madam Prime Minister, another question. Even though this is something that you always sort out, there's nothing that is really bulletproof, so to speak. Don't, don't misunderstand me. There's nothing that is bulletproof. Yeah. Why I say that is, at work there was a lady, she was, on, she was on the system, but there was a glitch on the system that we had to end up paying her monthly, even though from PAD, because PAD can see what I can't see. The only certain things I'm allowed to see. But she was on the system. Somehow, my co-worker went into the system and saw the glitch, corrected the glitch. But somehow, smart stream, I don't know if they were not seeing it or whatever. So what I'm saying is something similar to that, and it happens. And the individual is, is, is doing bonds. Are you all going to send something to like us accounting section that in case something like this happens, how the person will pay in the bonds mm -hmm. to the central bank? Well, I think you've just raised something which is important for us to appreciate when we get to the point of execution and mapping the process next week. And that is that irrespective of what is done by public service or central bank, that each finance officer um, and personnel officer in each ministry needs to keep the records for the individual um, individual workers. So I thank you for that. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, thank you. And, and as to the election, <laughs> when I know, I will let you know. <laughs> Any other questions from the floor at this time? If not, Zoom. <laughs> You would have said that the central bank will buy my bonds if I opt out. How will this process of buying and selling bonds be done? All right, so in terms of central bank buying bonds, we're referring to at payday. So in, your, in the example I mentioned earlier, Mary Lou indicated that she didn't want the $237 in bonds, and therefore she want her money in cash. The instruction comes from Ministry of Public Service to pay her the 97 from the treasury to her bank account, but instructions also go to the central bank to issue a bond in her name from government and sell the bond. But in order to delay, not to have any delay and have it seamless as possible, central bank buys it immediately. That's the only time central bank buys it and send the money to her bank account. After that, central bank sells it to an interested party. So that's the way in which it happened. The worker are not involved in this at all. This is simply from instruction from government to central bank, seamlessly. Any other comment or question? Good evening. If um, a public servant is retiring in December, can they purchase bonds beyond retirement? Jan says yes, but it's different. Let me explain. So the public servant who is retiring in December have the option to buy, having part of their salary in bonds up to the December retirement. Mm -hmm. After that, they can they have they will interact with the secondary market, central bank, I mean, and purchase bonds as become available. Okay, so that's it in that regard, yes. You have a question, sir? You're signaling to me, but I'm not understanding. Oh. Just, just one more. Can I use some of my own money, other than salary, to buy bonds under this program? Yeah, again, just at your other question, yes. You, what you can buy is out of your salary. So your allotment, how much you want, you get your full allotment. But then you can use your money, the equity that you have in your bank or wherever earning 0.15% to buy bonds from the central bank, which will earn you 5%. Of course, again, that has to be a bond that an individual public sector work gives up. Well, I am informed that there are also 38 
other persons with us. Um, the, your silence or reluctance suggests that you are fully satisfied and completely understand all that you have heard this evening. Uh, whilst we did schedule ourselves to be here for a longer time, there is no purpose, no useful purpose to be served just to prolong the meeting if everybody now understands. We have, you have another one? No, we have no more. No, I was ahead of you. I was told that was the last. Okay. Well, I'll keep talking until you certify. Uh, the, the main purpose of, this, of these meetings have been about the exchange or sharing of information. The more information you gather, the more powerful you are. The better you are placed to make an informed decision. It also puts a responsibility on you to share the truth as you understand it and thereby dispel the misinformation that may be out there. You are also now empowered to speak with your trade union leadership in clear and unambiguous terms as to the direction you want to go and the direction you want the collective to go. Roy, are you telling me something? Keep talking. Okay. <laughs> there, there's a limit to how long you talk, especially since my co-chair has displayed a certain level of reluctance to share this very onerous burden with me. But I'll forgive her. There is. So, Zoom me some more. Thank you. I have one question that literally just flew in. How much will the central bank charge if a non-government person wants to purchase a bond which becomes available? The central bank is not charging a fee for that. It depends on the trading in terms mm -hmm. of um, the price you get the bond at. At the moment, central bank, the way it works is central bank is bring together a, whole, a group of brokers who will do that. And at the moment, they're negotiating to be no broker's fee on the secondary market. But I believe we will get more information on that as um, we roll the program. Thank you. And just a, another, a few others. Essentially, it looks as if this, this person wants to understand how the interest payments will be made. Will you receive six checks at the end of each six-month period on each monthly annuity? Or will you receive the cumulative interest in one check at the end of a six-month period? At the end of a six-month period, the interest accumulated on all the bonds in your bond account, and remember that all the staggered, will be sent to your um, bank account credit union account or whatever account you designate you want your interest receiving. So it's not, it's not really a check will be mailed to you. It will be sent to your account. Thank you. Mr. X is a government pensioner, pensioner being paid through the Treasury. Mr. X is interested in participating in the BOSS program. Can Mr. X have a percentage of his pension paid in bonds each month just like government workers. We've had a lot, a tremendous amount of requests for pensioners like that. At the moment, what I can say is that we are working with the public workers now, and depending on how, well, remember we set a target, 100 million, we won't want to go too high above that, mm -hmm. maybe 110, 50, but depending on the debt dynamics which we are currently working through. So a decision is made on the pensioners soon, but in any event, the idea would be that they will start one month later. Let's work through the logistics with the public sector first, get that out of the way, and then we can see what limits we can work with. 
we have had a number of requests concerning what happens if somebody dies. Can I you mention just, that one? Yes. Can I, you give um, guidance again on that? Yeah. I mean, is it normal financial instrument? Um, you will it, do a will, or if you die, it goes to your estate. Um, but then the other instrument would do. Hmm? And this one relates to SOEs. If the SOEs have any questions on the instructions that will be sent, can a session be organized for them? If not, where can they direct their queries? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure once we've worked out the logistics, we can organize a session with the CEOs and financial officers, the SOEs, to go through it. But there will be clear dissemination of information regarding the process once, as the Prime Minister said earlier, the team worked through all the logistics of from start to finish. And this, I think, is the final one. From a financial management perspective, will government be establishing a restricted fund where returns from the investment will be kept in a safe investment interest-bearing account to help fund maturity instead of having to look for a lump sum at maturity? I think that question gone over my head. But I can try to answer what you think you asked me. The fund, each instrument that you invest matures. If you get your, you buy, you get your bond in July, it matures four years later, and you get back the principal in your bank account. And any, if you, what you invest in, what, in August, same thing. When we do the mass, we will be looking to get about say, eight million per month. We'll be issuing the bonds. So that means that starting four years in July, every year government will be looking to return eight million dollars. Mm -hmm. Based on our finances, that is comfortably not high and hard too high. We can do that. So if that's the question, if you're asking do we need to put down some money to do that, no, we don't. And you don't put down money to hedge bonds. So I I hope that's the question the ability to pay, and I, I think I have answered that. Okay. There's mm -hmm. one about contract gratuity. What about those positions that are subject to a contract gratuity? Will the gratuity be also subject to bonds? So right now we are not including gratuity, pensions, or anything else outside your regular pay, which is your net pay, after pay, pay, pay away, NAS is taken out. And doesn't include your travel or allowances. Question about maturity, pensions would be dealt with as we try to look at the overall envelope. Remember, again, every time we issue bond, that's a debt. And we don't want to go back in a place where you can't service a debt. So because you can borrow all the money in the world, don't mean you borrow all the money in the world. And that's what we want to avoid. Now, the, as we said earlier, there'll be another instrument that will come out later that we're working on. When it comes out, it will be ready to help fund, help support NAS and claims, et cetera, to give them some liquidity. That would be a pandemic, so I'll take one. That's a slightly different instrument. So right now, we are governed by our debt and our, on what we're trying to achieve. The person is a government employee. This bond is, this bond boss program is from Z23 to where Parliament is. Now, a person who works in the Z38 scale, which is roughly $2,300, sorry, $2,033.90. The person wants to know, as a government employee, if they can, be, they can invest in the fund, and how and how much percentage? Any person earning less than, but in order to calculate our overall envelope, we excluded anyone earning less than $3,000 net of PYE and AS per month, which we include your person too, right? But those individuals, because you recognize one person at lower income level tends to spend most of their salary on my fee expenses, and two, the government is coming with a housing program for first target at that level. I might need liquidity. 
However, anyone, anyone, including those below 3,000 a month, can opt to have bonds. How much percentage? Any amount you want, whatever you have is disposable. But they want it to take from the salary just like yeah. how ours will be taken. So, so they would like to know. So just that you will have to assess yours and see what you can afford because I say you Not can me, you would have taken from mine already. I mean, my friend. <laughs> right. Just that any public servant will have to assess their position mm -hmm. to see, even if government say you can have 10%, maybe you can only have 45 or 7. That's what that person has to do. They'll say, well, I get paid 2,600. After they look at my expenses and my deductions that I got to fix, I can only afford 200. We accommodate that. So what would a person have to do since that they're not the in the same 20? form? They would have to indicate via that same form that will come to everyone how much they want when it, uh, from starting French. Oh, so we can get forms? Yes. Oh, electronic. But we were, we were, we were working through the logistics, but you will, be a, you will get a chance to indicate it. And you are looking that this would start most likely... We're looking to start in July. Ne this is June? Next month? Next month, ma'am. Okay. Now, this may not pertain to the little things. This is dealing now with the, we will call business now, the business aspects of the 110 million, all right? right? 110 million you're looking at. Target is fiscal space? Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. What about it? Okay. Now, reading the paper, this is just a gimmick. Um, they say it was Burt. Now it's boss, though. I know it's big and win. Anyway, that's just a by the way. It was never Burt. Burt is talking about our, our transformation recovery program. Madam Prime Minister, don't hear me. Anyway, <laughs> my thing is now, when I came in, you said about if, when the bonds go to Central Bank, you, you take out of the person's salary. Just correct me where you go wrong. And the person says they want cash, that the money, the, the fact that the bond was purchased already, and the person wants back the cash, the bond still has the value, correct? Correct. So the bond was issued in the person's name, but the person wants cash. Right. Mm -hmm. And the bond is at Central Bank, let's say $112. Central Bank buys it and gives you... That the person wants $112 cash. Central Bank buys it and gives them $112. Right, and give mm -hmm. them. Now, for what this boss program is about, mm -hmm. now, this part of financials are too high. Mm -hmm. I just want you to explain to me. That since that happens, you're saying you're looking to do things of capital and that kind of stuff with this... B-O-S-S, -S, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Now what I want to know is how, how this is, this 110 million is going to come about when, the pers when persons want back their cash, mm -hmm. the bond is in the central bank, mm -hmm. but says 60% of the bonds that are, if I use the word sold, am I correct? Mm -hmm. Right, yes, yes. 60% of the bonds that are sold are, I want to nullify, a, no one repurchase. No, those bonds will always be out there. When a public servant gives out his bond, somebody else buys it. So the bond is still there, and another person in the public or semi-public public sector is earning money on that bond. So it wants to exist. It stays there. Yeah. And it's being invested. But the bond, so when, when you, a public servant, Mary Lou, buys, gets part of their salary as a bond, the bond is issued in their name. The worker has two, a number of options. Mm -hmm. They want to keep the bond, mm -hmm. or they want to convert to cash, mm -hmm. all some part of. Right. Irrespective of what that person says, that bond remained in existence for four years. Right. And someone else will hold the portion they want to give up and earn the interest on that portion. As government, right. the bond has been issued. And so we have created the fiscal space oh. to operate in. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that fiscal space allows the government to take that same amount and inject into capital. 
And the reason I explain, I don't know if you're getting at it, is were you here from my analogy of what is fiscal space? Yes, you do that. Right. So it's not an issue of liquidity because government has financing, finance now. Mm -hmm. It's an issue of fiscal space. Mm -hmm. And if you want to maintain a decent fiscal position which is sustainable and prudent and not hang your hat too high, mm -hmm. you have, may have all the money in the world around you, but in your fiscal container, you have all the expenditures and all you spend must fit in there. So for me to move and spend a bit more in capital, and why I want to do that is I want to increase employment, so cut some of the employment we see around the place. If you start painting schools and government buildings and doing roads and defending place and cutting on bush and doing all this, people who get unemployed from the hotel sector and from other places related to tourism can get some work. So I want to do that, but I want to, I got to operate in this 50, 40 foot container. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I have to save on one area and because everything, this 45 foot container is recorded as cash, yes. when I pay 806 million in cash, that means that's my space. Mm -hmm. But if I could save from paying 806 million in cash, maybe 100 million, because instead of paying cash, I give you cash, but I give you a bond for 10 million, right? I don't put the money in container, there's a bond container out there for debt. Mm -hmm. That's debt, that's not expenditure. Mm -hmm. Put that in the debt container, freeze up. 100 million here, space, right? Mm -hmm. So because they didn't pay 100 million in space, because people still holding their bonds, I know can say, oh, you got space. I can put some in capital. You see? So even though Mary, Mary is one of the people in here, the 25,000 public workers in here that get 807 million, mm -hmm. even though Mary Jane says she don't want your bond, mm -hmm. the bond's still there. Mm -hmm. Somebody else buy the bond mm -hmm. in the private sector. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Mm -hmm. So the bond still exists, so I still got my fiscal space. Mm -hmm. Even if Mary Jane buy peace, I still issue her with her cash, cash. Mm -hmm. net of the bond. Mm -hmm. So it creates fiscal space. Mm -hmm. Which means the true program is truly optional because it doesn't really matter what Mary Jane says. Mm -hmm. Her wish will always be satisfied. You understand? Right. So and the therefore, boss, I can increase. Right. Increase. So the boss, it has a cap because where this is, you don't want to, what you would call, end up with too much of a deficit. I mean, that's why, if I want to, a deficit of 6%, right. if I want to widen and go back to the old days when deficit is so what, about at 7% where your revenues outstrip your expenditure, I could get a 30 foot container, mm -hmm. a 90 foot, 100 foot, why not big it by this container car? They don't care about your deficit, mm -hmm. but because they don't want to go back to the old days, mm -hmm. where we have those unsustainable fiscal position where you can't pay your bills, I, I must maintain this container of mm -hmm. product fiscal space. Particularly since they're losing 500 million on, on revenues, right? Mm -hmm. So when COVID, if when COVID hit, as it has hit, because they have a prudent fiscal space defined, and because they want prudent on my fiscal behavior, and I got my debt, I fixed my debt, and I fixed my reserves. I don't want to worsen my position because COVID will eventually lift, mm -hmm. and I don't want to be committed with a. Can they say worthless? All right, forget what I'm saying. An unsustainable fiscal position that don't allow me now to adjust and, and face reality. Mm -hmm. Hurricane season coming. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? Mm -hmm. I've got that space. You understand? Mm -hmm. So that is why I keep my 40 foot container and I'm going to try to do what I've got to do with India, mm -hmm. which means spend more capital, soak up employment, but I still got to deal with this here. Right. So, so I come up with a way where I don't disadvantage the workers. I give you choice, I give you your money. If you can save, you're gonna earn something, so it'll be it's a no-brainer. And if you can't save, I'd find a way to solve your problem, and I still keep my fiscal space. You follow what I'm trying to do? What we're doing? So, yeah, not sure. so your your boss program with the with your cap that you're looking for the 110 to, million, to, to, right? 110 mm -hmm. million mm -hmm. to invest in the capital. Mm -hmm. Where is that? You're being prudent all the time. Mm -hmm and not, as we say, for the 80-foot, um, let me say, for instance, just, just in scenario, you're building a hotel. Mm -hmm. This is one thing. And within this cap, you're investing in this 110 million, mm -hmm. but you're not supposed to come outside of this 10 million. I live in my means. I live within my means. A bigger? We are living within our means. We live within our means. Oh, oh, right, that's what I meant. So, mm -hmm. so the, the 110 is the cap, so that's why... Um, and we may be afford a little more, but at the beginning, 
that we call, let's see what it gives us before right. we think about, that way we might think about pensioners or maybe think, these, these percentage I give our guidelines, you might be allow people pay a little more, but you need to see that first. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Good evening. Uh, someone who's never owned or purchased a bond, uh, quick question. How do we access information on these bonds? Uh, do we have to register to the central bank? So, this is a very good question. In fact, that's why you questions make you see it. remember things that you forget to say. Um, there's definitely, first of all, when you get your bond account, is that the central bank? You will get a monthly statement. And you can interact with the central bank on that, on any information. But usually in bond issues, central bank is not this heavily involved. But because we recognize public workers, we don't want anyone to have disadvantage. may not have all the same level of financial literacy. French bank is playing this key role, answering your questions, providing guidance, etc. In addition to that, we're going to be having some financial literacy clinics starting very soon, all through the island, where simple persons can bring in our knowledge of, of bonds, um, how to save, how to trade, what it means, what to look for, how to monitor process, and etc over the next couple, couple of weeks and months. Okay, so yeah, but for you, your answer is central bank. In terms so of those workshops will also address the issue of uh, buying bonds between, uh, buying a sum between regular people because I'm trying to figure out how that will be facilitated. Yeah, so you, when you get your bond account, you're going to say, well, I got 500 bonds. You walk, you might come across and say, well, I get some bonds. Uh, you figure, well, I need to spend my money. That interaction between two, you contact central bank or you download the form change filling information, the person gives you money, dollar for dollar, most likely, and you sell and you, uh, you get in, your form notarized, upload the central bank website and the information you change. But all along the process, any in doubt, you can contact the central bank. Listen, I got by the jewel one, set by my bonds, how should I proceed? You get the information. So we're making uh, one sure. One last question. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was leaving home, because I only came here for the question part, uh, when I was leaving home, I think I was hearing you saying that due to restructuring, these bonds will be protected should the government change. Uh, will that, does that mean that the, whoever's in power then will be, uh, will be required to pay us dollar for do, dollar, the dollar on dollar mm -hmm. for the bonds that we would have your, purchased? Your, your bond has a value on it. If we buy a thousand dollar bond, you are entitled legally to receive a thousand dollar at the end of four years. Okay, fantastic. That, I don't see a circumstance in which that would change. Okay, thanks. Okay. Um, I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank those in the back who have been doing all the hard work and ensuring that the persons, uh, let me just, the Zoomers have been able to be in contact and participate in these sessions. Um, the the co-chair Um, is here in full view, warned, ready, and able to make some further remarks, which will signal that we've reached the point of the adjournment. I'd like I was about to say that I'd like to thank the Prime Minister for her part in facilitating these series of meetings. It has been two very long days, but I dare say it has also been two very rewarding days. And I know of a lady who has been at her happiest notwithstanding the long times. Are you signaling that there is still activity on the Zoom? Okay, I was mistaken. Um, so I now invite my co-chair to make some remarks 
after which the Prime Minister will speak. Thank you, Edwin. And I don't have much to add, but I would certainly wish to reiterate um, the comments of appreciation to the Prime Minister of Barbados, the Minister of Finance, the Minister responsible for the public service for suggesting, for proposing that these meetings could be conducted jointly with the trade union movement. We in the trade union movement, certainly in the Barbados Workers Union, have not considered it as our Prime Minister inserting herself into the situation, nor have we considered it to be an attempt of hers to manipulate. We see it as a prime opportunity to have some very technical questions answered. And we think that the last two days have served that particular purpose. And we hope that our membership, those who have joined on Zoom, those who we have engaged um, individually in clinics to before these sessions were planned at the level of our executives and so on, we are happy that they, are, they also are satisfied with the process that we have gone through to bring us to a point where we are in a final iteration of a proposal that has been rolled out to you. And from your questions and comments, it will be tweaked even further because you have given us more food for thought. And for this, we thank you. We hope that you understand that although the sessions planned yesterday and today are concluded, that there's still opportunity for us to avail ourselves to you, certainly in the Barbados Workers Union where you have further questions. We are on hand to answer each and every question. I think that by now, for all of us who have been a part of the process, certainly over the last two days, we know a boss top notch. And so we no longer need the Prime Minister, nor do we need you, Dr. Greenwich, with all due respect. We got this done pat. The only thing we would vary in our presentations, we won't be talking about Mary Jane or Mary Lou, I hate them names. We'll probably talk about Dorcas or Dorothy or something that Bajans can relate to. But <laughs> we got it, and we think that from the response that we've gotten from our constituents, they got it as well. And a number of them have been indicating, for instance, from the BWU, we had a large group, Water Authority representing here with just about 20 people or so, just to show faith with the process, but signaling very clear, clearly we are on board with this. We had a BSDU. We had a number of other sections of the public service not present here, not because they are not interested, but because they've already indicated that they are on board. And so we want to say thank you for all, to all public servants for your patience, for your understanding, for your commitment to each other and the objective that we are trying to satisfy that objective of job retention for all public servants, but more so for your commitment to those who are not in the public service, those who are in the private sector that you also want to see re-engaged in active employment so that we can get the economy moving in an upward direction. So thanks to all for your time. Thanks to the Ministry of the Public Service for its coordination. Thanks to the National Sports Council. Thanks to the ushers. Thanks to everybody that I have not thanked, and thank God for bringing us to the end of these two days. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman and Madam Co-Chair and Dr. Greenwich and all other members of the labor movement. Um, it doesn't seem like less than a week from when we met last Thursday at LESC. And we committed to a process that I would like to suggest has brought honor to your membership, to our employees in the public service, and to our country. I believe that this example and I say all the time,
that Bajans learn more by example than by instruction. But that this example of how we relate to each other, I didn't send anybody down here to carry a message. I did what? Myself. I came myself. And I brought my primary advisor who was responsible for helping to craft it and who was the lead negotiator with you, the labor movement, in crafting the revised proposals which you now have. I would like to believe, and I'm conscious that I'm standing in front of the chairman of the Sports Council, who, when I was a minister of education, taught me a lesson in my office that I've never forgotten. And I've repeated it more than a few times, so he knows that even if he forgets it, I haven't. And it was from his experience as a school teacher in a school where boys can be challenging and where girls can equally be challenging. And he said to me then, too many of our people talk about people, talk to people, but do not talk with people. And as simple as those two words are, talk with, it is at the core of what is necessary for us to be successful as a nation. Whether it is the children in the schoolyard and trying to avoid bullying and all other kinds of embarrassing things that children can do to each other, whether it is teacher to child, whether it is preacher to congregant, whether it is boss to employee, whether it is employee to employee, supervisor to the person below, I almost feel that this example that we have, in spite of how hard it was on everybody, and I know it's been hard because I've felt it with you, nine hours of meetings effectively yesterday almost, and today seven and a half or so. But it was necessary because we have to talk with each other, not to and not about. And I hope that this lesson goes for the country in terms of how it is possible for us to do business together, to get a win-win wherever possible. And if we can't get a win-win, how to respect each other when there are differences still. And I say so, conscious, that if we get those small things right, there's no rocket science about productivity with all due respect. The first rule of productivity is respect. First rule of productivity is treating people how you want to be treated. Because when those quant qualitative things are done, then the quantitative measurements become easier to take care of. But what's rough is how we make each other feel or don't feel. And that is why, more than anything else, I believe that how, what will you say? Walk the walk and don't just talk the walk. So without further ado, I want to thank the labor movement, truly, for being partners in progress for the building of this nation. And you hear sometimes my voice crack, why? Because I feel honored and privileged to lead a nation where people have a sense of commitment and responsibility, not just to the nation, but to the majority of people who live here. I'd like to say perfect, but we are not divine, but to the majority. 
I want to thank the gymnasium and the sports council for at short notice, not just accommodating us, but accommodating us in the first outing, to use a good old Bajan word, after lockdown in COVID. I want to thank the staff who work here, who, as we were doing our business and going in and out, they made sure that all of the protocols required by the Ministry of Health to ensure that those of you who came in after others were coming in into a sanitized environment and still be able to feel a sense of comfort. I want to thank the technical people because you have amplified this audience for us beyond that which has been here physically and you've done it in a way that has been seamless. On average, we've been having seven, 800, I think, in the early sessions in the morning. In the evening, it tends to flag off and flag off when people are obviously getting busy or getting home. But midday and morning sessions, early afternoon sessions have been very good. I thank the media. They have the luxury of not only coming here, but tracking it on the digital media. But in spite of that, many of them have been here still the last two days. And I want to thank the police and all of the other persons who have helped take care of us the last two days. And finally, I want to say to Barbadians, today, and it may not mean a lot to some, but today, others who didn't know and don't know a lot about us got to sit in judgment on us this morning at the IMF board. They made a determination that everything that we were to do, it was our fourth test now? Third, third review. Everything we were to do as of the end of March and all the targets we were to meet that we said because the targets are set first by us, the labor movement, the private sector. But everything we said as a nation that we would do, we have done. And at the end of the day, as the old people would tell you, what matters is the name. The name you got, or oh, you come into the world with a name, you got to leave with the name. And what is the reputation that this country has matters? Why? Because if something like COVID happened, you need the benefit of the doubt. If something like a storm happened, you need the benefit of the doubt. And if people can say, you see them people? When they tell you they can do X, they do X. Everybody could fall down, give them a chance. The second part of what they did was effectively that to determine how the International Monetary Fund at a time of COVID could help the people and government of Barbados. And what they have done is to extend a further line of credit of 180 million Barbados dollars. So just as I'm asking us to make it with 100 million, they are putting up almost twice for us without any big set of processing or separate documentation. In fact, there was none really. They met with us. They met with the BERT Monitoring Committee. And in two twos, they have agreed to afford us the opportunity for this line of credit to be able to help us through this period. I have no doubt that if we had not kept our word and if we had not been faithful to the BERT program, that this would not happen. And why can we be faithful to the BERT program? Because it is ours. It is crafted by Bajans, in the image of Bajans, for Bajans, according to what we could do. And we did not see a pandemic, and hence our intention to shift the burden, and it's still predominantly the burden has been on capital for the first time in our modern independent history, rather than on labor. But like with everything else, this one is so big, 
that everybody got to do so and pick up a little weight. May not be a whole table, might be the chair, might be the microphone stand, might be the laptop, but every Barbadian who is committed to this country and who cares about this country has to help carry a little weight for a period of time. Mark, I look at you again. People who want to be champions and gold medalists, what they got to do? They got to put in the work. They got to put in the time. They got to put in the discipline. And if we want to be world class, then it is up to us to put in the time, put in the work, put in the discipline. Be confident, be creative, be committed, but above all else, be compassionate and care about people. Let us do it together and let us look back at this moment as a moment where we chose to walk a path that was not the easiest path, but it was the right path for building our country. Thank you and God bless. There is nothing more for me to say other than go with God and stay safe.